She spoke over the heads of the police, putting her under house arrest. Benazir Bhutto warned Pakistan's government is paralyzed and risked becoming like Iraq. After being stopped from addressing a mass rally, the former prime minister again hit out at President Pervez Musharraf, who's imprisoned her. Washington is also voicing its concern about his state of emergency and what it called the curtailment of basic freedoms. Our correspondent Matt McClure watched the latest protests unfold. <laughs> Amid a crowd of supporters, Benazir Bhutto finally manages to leave her home and push her way to the police barricades. Chaos ensues as waiting media struggle to get a view. You can hear her, but you can't see her. That's Benazir Bhutto on the other side of that fence, beyond that forest of reporters and cameras, addressing the police, asking them, brothers, please lay down your arms and let me pass. We are calling for... General Musharraf to keep his commitment and retire as Chief of Army Staff on November 15th. And we are calling upon, uh, we are calling for the holding of elections on schedule. Unlike other opposition leaders, Budo was not immediately detained when the state of emergency was declared. And even though she is being restricted now, she is still the only opposition voice that has been allowed to speak in public. Hundreds of her supporters clashed with police in nearby Rawalpindi as they tried to reach the site of the planned rally. Some threw stones in anger after they were stopped from getting through. Police retaliated with tear gas and by charging with their batons. Dozens are reported to have been arrested. The southern city of Karachi was also the scene of violent clashes as authorities acted swiftly to prevent the protests from raging out of control. Outside Budo's home, any supporters who raised their voices against emergency rule were quickly silenced, bundled away by police and taken into custody. Authorities seemed willing to use whatever force was necessary to keep this protest from happening. Still, Pakistan's People Party vows to continue the battle to restore democracy. This entire party has given a great deal of sacrifice for the restoration of democracy before. They are prepared to do it now. We did not want bloodshed on the streets. We did not want bloodshed, bloodshed on the streets of Islamabad or Pakistan. But we are, they are trying to push us to the wall. This is going to be a mess. What do you do now? We are going to resist this clampdown and we are going to fight back with our full force. Budo's supporters are not content with General Musharraf's promise to hold elections by February. For now, though, it seems they can do little to press the issue. Emergency rule remains very much in force, even for the leader of Pakistan's largest opposition party. Matt McClure, Al Jazeera, Islamabad. Our correspondent James Bays watched those extraordinary events from just outside Benazir Bhutto's home. He says there's still confusion over Bhutto's arrest. The government has been saying that Benazir Bhutto is not under house arrest, but it was clear to all of us who were at her home that she's unable to leave that home right now and uh, had to speak to reporters using a megaphone over those lines of riot policemen who were preventing her from leaving her residence. Exactly what happens to her now is not entirely clear. Uh, Pakistan's Minister of State for Information says she will probably be released tomorrow, although some other government officials said earlier on that she might be held in her home for 30 days. James Bays, Al Jazeera, Islamabad. Well, elsewhere in Pakistan, a suicide bomber has blown himself up outside the home of one of the ruling party's ministers, killing four people. The attack happened in Peshawar, the capital of the volatile northwestern frontier province. The MP, who's the Federal Minister for Political Affairs, who's also regional head of President Musharraf's ruling party, was unhurt. The attack followed clashes between police and supporters of Benazir Bhutto in Peshawar as they gathered to depart for the planned mass rally in Rawal Pindi. At least 25 people were arrested as police used batons and tear gas to disperse the protesters. Tarek Fatimi is a former Pakistani ambassador to the United States, Jordan and China. He says President Musharraf didn't anticipate the angry reactions to him imposing a state of emergency. 
Having been in power for eight years with untrammeled, unchallenged authority, he thought people would, he would be able to walk away with this particular act. But the manner in which the people have stood up, especially the judiciary, the legal community, the media, and now increasingly the students, especially in the city of Lahore, these all do not portend well for the general. Obviously, the decision to cancel the 30-day de detention or house confinement of Benazir Bhutto indicates that there are conflicting opinions at play and the general is unsure as to what he should do next. Well, supporters of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto have vowed to maintain opposition to the emergency rule. The spokesman for Ms Bhutto, Senator Fatarullah Baba, says she's prepared to lay down her life to see democracy restored. Well, she just realized that there is risk and danger to her life. But at the same time, the risk and threat to Pakistan and to the entire people of Pakistan is even greater. So the choice is to save Pakistan or to save one's own life. Ms. Bhutto has taken a conscious decision to save Pakistan from the brink. And she has announced a long march on the 13th of March and on the 13th of November. And on the 11th of November, the Pakistan People's Party, Sindh, will be observing a complete strike against the excesses committed today against the people. For the first time in more than three years, Aung San Suu Kyi is being allowed to meet leaders of a pro-democracy party. The breakthrough was announced by the UN Special Envoy in Myanmar. Ibrahim Gambari also says Suu Kyi's offer to cooperate with the military junta who have held her under house arrest for 12 of the last 18 years. The latest disaster to hit China's coal mining industry has killed at least 32 miners. Leaking gas was to blame in southwestern Guizhou province. On average, 13 miners die in mines across China every day. U.S. politicians have chosen a new attorney general despite his refusal to condemn the torture of suspected terrorists. Michael Mukasey was eventually confirmed after fierce criticism in a divided Senate. The 53 votes to 40 was the lowest for any new attorney general in more than 50 years. Some senators said they were outraged at the retired judge's refusal to condemn waterboarding or simulated drowning during interrogation. And air, rail and public transport strike is causing chaos in Italy. Heavy rain added to the misery of travellers left stranded at bus stops, railway stations and airports. Workers are on strike in protest at new laws being debated in Parliament, which they fear will mean more casual labour and pay cuts. Millions of people are breathing a sigh of relief after a massive tidal surge in the North Sea didn't happen. But there's still flood warnings in East England and the Netherlands Sylvia Lennon reports. For hours, the tidal surges battered large parts of eastern England, spurred on by violent winds from a powerful storm that started in the North Sea. Waves of up to six metres crashing up against defences along the coast. Hundreds of people in the highest risk areas had to be evacuated from their homes to emergency shelters. Even the Thames River barrier was closed as a precaution. In London, a special meeting of the government's emergency committee was held by the Prime Minister, Gordon Brown. Uh, our first priority is, of course, to ensure people are safe. And that's why, over the course of uh, yesterday evening and right through the night, we've been bringing in the helicopters, the uh, uh, sandbags, uh, the preparations that are absolutely necessary so that people are safe. And our first duty is to make sure that, um, as the waves and the tides have their effect, uh, everybody is safe. But the storms weren't contained in Britain alone. In the Netherlands, flood defences were also activated in Rotterdam for the first time in its 10-year history, as sea levels rose by three metres. Ferry services were cancelled, with winds of up to 100 kilometres an hour anticipated. In Germany too, boat services were halted, although the storm did not hit there as hard as was expected. Gusts of up to 110 kilometers per hour hit northern France overnight, with storms blowing off rooftops and uprooting trees. The tidal surge is the highest since 1953, when devastating floods killed more than 2,000 people in Britain and the Netherlands. But although the peak of the surge passed without major incident, surveillance operations will continue to take place along the North Sea coast. Sylvia Lennon, Al Jazeera. 
More than 50 people have died in fierce fighting over the past 48 hours in Somalia's capital Mogadishu. Government soldiers backed by Ethiopian troops are battling Islamic courts fighters. Witnesses said Ethiopians fired tank shells into a market in southern Mogadishu, killing a number of civilians. Snipers also killed people leaving the streets strewn with dead bodies.